top programming languages of 2021 to get a job. This year, there are six programming languages that are far above all the rest, and I have the data to back it up. I went through every programming language on five different dimensions. These dimensions are number of jobs, number of freelance jobs, number of learning resources, how many people use it at work, and the trend of the language. Is it getting more or less popular over time? I then gave every language a score and ranked them relative to each other. From my ranking, you'll then be able to know where to focus your attention. But first, let me tell you how I created this score. By the way, my name's Aaron Jack and I have one mission to get you a job as a remote software developer in 2021. So if that sounds good, consider subscribing. For the number of jobs, I went to indeed.com, which is one of the most popular job boards on the internet. I then searched for language space developer, which gives us an idea of how many jobs overall there are for a given language. Of course, this isn't gonna be perfect and there are other job boards out there, but it gives us some idea of how many jobs are out there. To get an idea of demand for freelance developers, I did a similar thing where I went to Upwork and then I searched for language space developer, and this will give us a number of freelance jobs we can compare in relative terms. Now for number of resources, I went to a programmer's best friend, Stack Overflow, and searched for the tag of a given language. The answer count gives us an idea of how many different situations are covered. Let's say you're Googling to do a specific thing in that language. How likely is it that that question is going to be answered? For the popularity score, I looked at the Stack Overflow developer survey for the past three years. This includes a ton of questions, but I focused on just one. What languages do you use at work? We get a percentage from this, that is the percent of people who said yes, I use this language in a given year, and we have this for three years, which creates sort of a trend line, which we can use to predict the usefulness of a language in 2021 and beyond. So let's finally get into it and talk about language number six, C++. C++ is a low-level programming language with memory management. C++ is a superset of C, so it's like a C with more features. And it's also the best performing or fastest programming language, which means it's written for software where every millisecond counts. Most browsers like Chrome are programmed in C++. It's used for high frequency stock trading and other low level embedded systems where hardware is a constraint. Overall, C++ had the second lowest jobs on Indeed, 10,000, and the lowest freelance jobs on Upwork, just 54. But these numbers aren't terrible. Keep in mind, this is the top six of all programming languages out there. It also had the lowest answer count at 706,000, and the lowest overall use of the top six at 23.9% for last year. Looking at all three years, use went down slightly in 2019, but has been flat in 2020. So it's pretty much flat. Number five, we have C Sharp, which is another C family language with a lot in common with both C++ and C. C Sharp is very commonly used with the Microsoft.NET framework, so it's used a lot in Windows development and enterprise software. On top of that, you can use C Sharp for Unity game development and a variety of other different things. C Sharp actually had double the job count of C++ at 20,000, but around the same low amount of freelancing jobs. And in fact, none of the C family languages seem to be very good for freelance work. C Sharp also has double the stack overflow answers of C++ at 1.4 million, and about 10% more people use it at work with that being 31.4% last year. The trend line has also been flat to a bit down. Okay, at number four we have PHP, which is notorious to a lot of people for being kind of a cumbersome language to use, but it's really not that much worse than any other language. PHP is kind of the traditional backend language of the web, but has in recent years lost a bit of market share to Python and JavaScript. That said, so much of the internet is still written in PHP, it's still a great choice. So let's look at the numbers. The job count for PHP was actually the lowest of all at 5.2K, but don't worry because the freelance count was at 406, which was the second highest of all, which is what bumped it up into fourth place. There's 1.3 million answers on Stack Overflow, around the same as C Sharp though slightly less people used it at work at 26.2% in 2020. Now the real concerning part about PHP is it has been dropping each year in the trend line, being all the way up at 30.7% back in 2018. 
That said, PHP is so uncool, it's almost become cool again, meaning so many people are focusing their attention elsewhere. You could carve yourself out a niche learning PHP in 2021. Moving on to number three, and this might surprise people it's not higher, but number three is Python. A lot of people say Python is the best language to learn first because it has a pretty straightforward syntax that's very close to pseudocode. In other words, it hardly even looks like code. Python is also extremely widely used for scripting, data science, and back-end web development. It's also popular for the trendy machine learning and artificial intelligence. Now I've made a bunch of videos on Python, but the super important part of Python is understanding the library ecosystem because there's a library for almost anything you want to do, and it's part of the reason it's so popular. Let's look at the data though and see why it's number three. The job count on Indeed was 25,000, which is the highest we've seen so far, but it's still much lower than our top two. The freelance count, however, is only 225, which is a bit lower than you would probably expect. The Stack Overflow answer count is average at 1.6 million, which is good, but not the best. Last year, 44% of people used Python at work, which is really, really high. That's almost half of all developers. And the best part of all is the trend, which has been going up by a crazy 3% per year. So 2018 was 38.8%, up to 41.7 in 2019, and finally 44.1. Overall, Python is a great choice, and chances are you're going to learn it at some point in your developer career, no matter what, so it's not really a waste of time to learn it. Okay, number two, and this is kind of the upset, is actually Java. Java, like C Sharp and C++, has strong typing, meaning every variable needs a type, and it's also compiled. So these are kind of two safeguards that prevent you from writing bad Java and also make it great for working on in big teams, which is why it's the choice of many large companies. It also has fairly good performance, so it can be effective in writing large back-end applications. Let's look at the numbers, and first, the job count is the huge shocker because there's actually 34,738 jobs available, meaning Java, at least on Indeed, is still the king. Now the freelance count on Upwork is also surprisingly higher than Python, but still lower than PHP in our top spot language. The Stack Overflow answer count or number of resources available is also the second highest at 1.7 million. And the number of people that use it at work is 40.2%. Now the main concern about Java is some people do say it's kind of a dying language being slowly phased out and replaced by languages like Go. In 2018, it was 45% of people used, 2019, 41, and 2020, 40, and we can probably expect that to continue. But so many large companies have all their code written in Java, and it's going to be that way for a long time, so it's still very worth learning. Now, before we talk about number one, here are some honorable mentions that didn't make the top six for one reason or another. And these languages are going to be C, Ruby, Go, and Rust. C is still great and rather popular, but didn't quite make the top six. That said, if you know C++, you kind of already know C and its use cases, so you'd also qualify for those jobs. As for Ruby, well, it's a very low market share these days, and it's falling more and more each year, where Go and Rust are kind of the opposite. Low market share, but they are growing quite fast at around 3% like Python per year. The problem with newer languages like Go and Rust are there's a relatively low number of learning resources and we can see that in the Stack Overflow answer count. And they're also going to have a low number of libraries which, trust me, as someone who's learned Go can be a bit cumbersome. Finally, our number one language, maybe to no one's surprise, is JavaScript. And JavaScript you can use to do absolutely anything in 2020 and there's so many reasons it's the best and I'm about to show you why. But first, what can JavaScript do? Well, it's the go-to language for front-end. So that is code that will run in the browser. It's also the base of front-end frameworks like React, Angular, Vue, and Svelte. Not only that, but JavaScript's used on the back-end with the Node and Deno runtimes. It also rivals Python for having the best library ecosystem with the NPM package manager, which you can download code or libraries to do pretty much anything you want. Additionally, JavaScript is the foundation for being a solid either WordPress or Shopify developer, which you can learn with a bit of additional knowledge and practice, and this opens up uh, a huge new door for you. 
So let's actually dive into the numbers and look at job count, which is the second highest after Java at 30,570. Now keep in mind, this is just from searching JavaScript developer and not React developer, Angular developer, WordPress or Shopify developer. But in theory, you could also include all of those into this number if you wanted to. The freelance count is the highest and it's not even close at almost 700 jobs on Upwork. And again, that is just one freelance site. Stack Overflow Answers is also the highest at 2.1 million, which means anything you could possibly think of, there's probably an answer for already. And in 2020, a crazy 67.7 developers said they use at least some JavaScript at work, which is two thirds of everyone. So you're almost certainly gonna end up knowing at least a little bit of JavaScript in your developer career. As far as the trend line goes, it's gone slightly down, and since the last two years we're within 0.1% of each other, we can probably just call it flat. Okay, there you have it. The top programming languages for getting a job in 2021, backed up by data that I got today on January 1st, 2021. Remember, my mission is to get you a job as a remote software developer, so stick around by hitting the subscribe button if that's your goal. And with that said, I'll catch you soon.